oceanic crust. While we have such a dramatically different crust on our surface of the planet, like oceanic and continental, why we have these differences, what role plays in plate tectonics, and what do we know so far about that? Let's talk about oceanic crust, its properties, what we know about it so far, and what determine its properties and special behavior we observe right now on our surface of the planet. If you look on our Earth as a planet, for example, for a new planet you're trying to explore, everything under the ocean will be the big mystery for us. Everything on the surface we explore, we can walk over, dig through, sample, but the bottom of the ocean holds a lot of secrets for us. And for a very long time, the scientists around the world were unlocking the secrets of the continents, mountains, mountain buildings, all the different geologies of the continents, but the ocean was always the mystery. The majority of its features covered by kilometers of water, through which we can only penetrate in the previous century. Today, scientists know very well the structure of our Earth. We know its internal structure, composition, the core, the mantle, and the crust on surface. Everything that on the surface of the, our planet Earth should be the more familiar for us. However, it is the most complex and variable in composition, with a long history of differentiation and processing since its first solidified more than 4 billion years ago. On the surface of our planet, we differentiate a solid crust, which we call lithosphere, just a basically cooled mantle. And we also have other spheres, such as the hydrosphere, the oceans, including the water vapor in the atmosphere, and the atmosphere, the gas composition of our planet. Let's closely look in the crust. Crust is the coolest, most brittle and thinnest layer, less than 1 km in places, and in some places up to 30 km deep. And fundamentally, we know that there are two types of this crust. Those rocks that form the ocean floors and those that form the continents. Only recently we found out this difference. And we can tell now that the ocean crust is relatively thin in comparison with continental one. It's from a few hundred meters to about six kilometers deep in places. And it's composed predominantly from volcanic or igneous, we call them igneous volcanic, in the region rocks. If you look on the continental crust, in places it can reach up to 30 kilometers, very thick, and especially in places where two plates collide, building tall mountains with the deep roads going deep into the asthenosphere. And continental crust combines a huge variety of igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary rocks made from thousands of different minerals. Therefore, geology of continental crust is much more diverse and complex than of oceanic crust. All of that crust on our planet, oceanic and continental, create like a puzzle shield of our planet, composed of brittle upmantle, we call it lithosphere, and it's broken into seven continent-sized plates and another smaller plates, more than ten. And formation of all these plates, the movements against each other, relatively to each other, over billions of the years, affected the appearance of our planet, its climate and development of the life. Let's more in detail talk about oceanic crust. Oceanic crust is denser and heavier than the continental crust, and it's coming from its composition. Thus, we know that oceanic crust have a mean density about 2.9 gram per cubic centimeter, where continental is approximately 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter. Its mean oceanic crust is heavier because all of this heavy metal composition of igneous rock within. And only in the middle of the 20th century, scientists figure out that this property allowed to oceanic crust to subside under the continental crust and pushing the plates toward each other, building the mountains and creating the deep trenches in the ocean. And however, we know the geography of our Earth's land surface for a long time. In the 19th century, there was a lot of mapping going on around the planet. And we mapped basically almost everything on our planet surface, everything apart from the ocean floor. And only after the innovations due to the Second World War in the middle 20th century, we start to have technologies that allow us to explore the deep seabed 
in details. In my previous video about continental plate tectonics and conversation about plate tectonics, I'm in detail talk about this story, how first scientists mapped the ocean floor, discover the mid-oceanic ridges, and using paleomagnetism of the Earth, figure out how oceanic crust work. Later, after the Second War, with the Cold War and the development of nuclear submarines capable of remaining submerged and undetectable for length period, people start developing new tools to map what's happening undersea. A lot of maps start being created, they've been used mostly in the military. However, in the 70s of 20th century, we created the first map of the ocean floor. And that's when these striking mid-oceanic mountain ranges were revealed. Through all of the oceans, scientists saw this strange feature going through. And on a today's photometry map, you can see that. This mid-oceanic mountain range extends from the Arctic Ocean down through Iceland and the Atlantic Ocean, parallel to the North and South America coastline to the west, and Europe and Africa to the east. Continue th throughout the whole planet, having the big ridges in Pacific Ocean, Indian, and around Antarctica. These mid-oceanic trenches, or the mountains, they help us to understand how the oceanic crust forming, how it's moving, and what role it plays in plate tectonic. They're rising up to a few thousand meters from the ocean floor, and they're very distinguished by its morphology. They're very symmetrical, and there's a rift valleys along the length of its summit present. And it's something that's absolutely different from our familiar mountains on the land. On the land, the mountains are produced by compression of the crust. The mid-oceanic ranges is evidently the result of tension stretching and particular melting of the crust and spreading of it. We see a lot of striking features, numerous cross-cutting fractures, known as transform faults, which displace the crest of the ridge sidewise. And it's all indicated that the mid-oceanic range is evidently the result of increased heat flow from the mantle below, leading to the tension spreading, and with time the magma erupts and builds up those ridges. The older rocks around it pushed to the sides. These flanks of the ridges are reached heavily, and covered in deep places by sediment. And so far all these ridges are stretched out across hundreds or even thousands of kilometers till they met the ridge of the continental rise. In places like Pacific we have a lot of chains of mountain rise from the ocean floor forming volcanic islands, for example you know very familiar with Hawaii Islands. However, towards continental margins of sunlit masses, such as the west coast of South America and the east coast of Japan and Kamchatka Peninsula, the ocean floor kind of dips into the very narrow trenches. And the deepest of the one located there exactly, we know it's 11,040 meters deep, the Morianic Trench. These areas are famous for the earthquake activity, a lot of volcanic eruptions, and we call them the Ring of Fire around our planet. So let's figure out how it works. We know that interior of our planet are very hot. Our core is hot and it's constantly cooling down. We have this convention of the places where the cooling occurring, like when you boil in your soup, you have places where the bubbles coming out on the surface, bringing the hotter liquid up to the surface and mixing, bringing the cooler water from the surface down towards the bottom. A similar happening in our mantle of the Earth. In the places where heat rises, the plates are stretched out, thinned and fractured, and a hold molten rock well up to the Earth's surface in the form of magma and volcanic lava. In these places, we call them rift zones, create new crust. And in the ocean, it's typically mid-oceanic volcanic ridges, where on some surface of our planet we have places where it's happening on the continental plate. All that pushing and spreading the new material on the surface, it's cooling down, and the older man get pushed to the sides. For example, the famous floor of the Indian Ocean, midway between India and Africa, is spreading apart at the rate of 10 to 20 millimeters per year, and as a result, the Indian plate is being driven northwards into southern Asia. Just because on the way there's appeared another continental plate, both low-density plates crash towards each other, and the building big mountains, the biggest mountains on our planet. And we observe the rise of the Himalayas, the largest mountain range on our planet today.
In Atlantic Ocean, for example, American and African plates are spreading, moving apart. The Atlantic margin of both continents are known as the massive margins, since continental oceanic crust fused firmly together. As a result, the opening of the Atlantic pushes South America towards the Pacific at speed of 25 mm per year. But what's happening with this oceanic crust in places where it meets the continental? Everywhere where this crust meets the continental crust, it starts subsides going underneath because of its higher density and thin layer. From that friction generates large earthquake. And today, by mapping those earthquakes, the depths, we can see, like in 3D, the thickness of shiny crust within the stenosphere, how far it goes in places up to 600 kilometers before it's melt and been recycled. And this place is not just famous for the earthquake activity, but also there's a lot of volcanic activity. At this descending slab encounters increasing temperature and pressure, water release, lowering the melting temperature and partially melting minerals in overlying continental crust. The rising magma changes in composition why it's coming through this continental crust and surrounding rocks and its increase in silicate content. It's become viscous, trapping gases within, under the pressure. And finally, when it's escaped to the surface, we have violent explosion, volcanic eruption. Just because all oceanic crust is eventually get recycled under the continental crust, it's just so hard to find very old oceanic crust on our planet right now. We can reconstruct the history of plate movements up to 600 million years in the past. However, to reconstruct it into the past further become more and more complicated. There's only the sparse places on our planet when the old continental plates preserved on the surface, which are older than that time. With oceanic crust, that's even worse history. On today's surface, we can find the oldest large-scale oceanic crust in the West Pacific and Northwest Atlantic, about 180-20 million of years old. We can observe some older remnants of ancient ocean, it's called Thethys, which is about to 340 million years old, around the eastern Mediterranean Sea. The studies of the sediment on the bottom of the ocean, a lot of collecting samples of the sediment and dating it, give us this information. And we know the minimum age of the sediment will tell us the minimum age of the crust at that area, before it get onto the continents and get recycled. Another very interesting fact about oceanic crust is its magnetic record, which it gave us. In the times of exploration after the Second War, in early 60s, undersea surveys discovered that the sea floor around the spreading ridges in the eastern Pacific displayed remarkably symmetrical stripes of rocks. We noticed that polymagnetic field flowing in one direction and then switch directly to opposite, and then again and again, creating kind of like a barcode from the middle of middle oceanic ridge to the sides and very surprisingly symmetrically mapping each other. In the 60s, two Canadian scientists, geologists, realized that this pattern of magnetic stripes are produced by sequential reversal of Earth's entire magnetic field over the time. We know this reversal now that it's happening by changing flows of liquid metal in our outer core in the middle of our Earth. For that, watch my videos about plate tectonics to get familiar with and what we know and the internal structure of our planet to learn more about the core. Therefore, everything on the surface of the planet, if it's in a liquid form and it have magnified pieces of the metal, magnetic iron minerals, they align in with the Earth's overall magnetic field. So when the rocks cooling down, and harden it, they preserve a record of planetary magnetism of the time of the formation. So they align with the north and south in particular direction, and they will stay there when they cool down because they couldn't move anymore. With time, the geologists match these patterns of ocean floor magnetic stripes with dates of reversal over the last 4 million years obtained by US geophysicists from land-based radiometric measurements. And the results were astonishing. They show the ocean flora basalt on either side of the ridges were moving away from it at a rate of a few centimeters a year. Further research show that these uh, estimations are true for all around the planet, the oceanic crust. And coupling this with the sediment research on the surface of this oceanic crust, 
we figure out that most of the oceanic crust on our planet no older than 180 million years. Therefore, oceanic crust is quite dense, heavy, mobile, move fast, and it's one of the main locomotives that move our plates around our planet. Therefore, to understand the geology of the continents, you need to understand how oceanic plates play the role in it. We will talk in later videos about that fact and how the land we see right now on our surface, how the geomorphology of our Earth today been changed and formed by these processes at the bottom of the ocean.